Hello, this is Lerone Kuntz. I'm not on the stoop today, I'm in the house, but I have to give you an update on what happened today in court. Today, Elias did take the stand again, all right? They did ask Elias Hasmudin the same question that they asked him Thursday. They asked him, did he give his consent for the $5 million to be moved from the reserve fund to Platinum Partners? Did he give Norman Seabrook the consent to move that money? Because Norman has said in a sworn affidavit that he got approval or consent from the executive board to move that money. And Elias said unequivocally that he did not give consent for that $5 million to be moved. He said he did not know that that money had been transferred to Platinum Partners until the Puerto Rican Day Parade, which was a few days after the transaction had taken place. All right, so that, that is his answer. He is contradicting what Norman Seabrook wrote in his sworn affidavit that he had gotten the approval of the executive board to move that five million dollars okay now on cross-examination norman's lawyer paul sheckman questioned elias and he mentioned that there was discussions surrounding their decision our executive the executive board's decision to expand the executive board by five new members. And during these discussions, the lawyer asks um, Elias, didn't you guys discuss how to finance the expansion of the executive board? Didn't you talk about aggressively investing the reserve fund in order to generate more money to pay for the five new members of the executive board. Elias says, we did not discuss using the $5 million to invest, to, to um, generate money to expand, so to pay for the expansion of the executive board. Elias says that they did discuss how they were gonna pay for the expansion of the executive board, the new five, five executive board members. But he said they spoke about that they were going to, during contract negotiations, try to get the city to finance the five new executive board members. That was the option that was on the table. There was no option on the table to move the five million dollars from the reserve fund into Platinum Partners to invest to make the money for the um, expansion of the executive board. Elias was clear in saying that the reserve fund is not to be invested, that every municipal union has a reserve fund and every municipal union needs a reserve fund because that's what they use to protect their members. He says that if anything threatens the membership you have to have a reserve fund in order to go to battle for your officers in, in cases of correction officers. Okay, he says that we're a nonprofit. The COBA is a nonprofit, he says, and we are not in the business of trying to make money off of the union dues. He says that money is in the reserve fund for a reason and it's not to invest and make money from. It's for um, to defend the, the, the officers and use for the operation of the union. Okay, so he was very firm about that. That contradicts Norman C. Brooks's sworn affidavit saying that he got the consent of the executive board to invest the $5 million in platinum partners. That happened today. All right, now there's something else that happened today that is significant that I want to talk to you about. But before I get to that, I'm gonna talk about my book. Now, the reason why I talk about this book is because I think, it's, I think it'll help officers. You know, during my career, I could have used a book like this. And um, I don't see anybody else 
writing books for offices. And so that's why I tried to fill that void and write this book. Um, so I'm going to take this opportunity to read another review of this book. Um, this book, this review is from the Texas Jail Association. Um, it says this book is invaluable. It says, firstly, a fantastic starter book is Correction Officer's Guide to Understanding Inmates, The 44 Keys to Power, Control, and Respect by Lerone Kuntz, a retired corrections officer of New York City. His book is not only priceless for entry-level officers acclimating to the profession, but also renders grounding and motivation for those senior staff members. Kuntz's informal writing reads as a conversation with a colleague and the book is compiled of example upon example of lessons he learned through his experience. Collective, collectively, this book is invaluable to officers at any level of experience. And that's from the Texas Jail Association. Okay, so if you know of anyone or if you yourself could benefit from this book, I um, advise you to purchase it um, I'm going to provide the link to Amazon. It's $12.95 on Amazon, paperback like this, like you see here, or $9.99 in ebook if you want to put it on your iPod or iPhone or Android phone or anything like that. I also would like to um, show the keys once again, which you've seen before. Um, these are keychains um, to have engraving. And the ones that are engraved go for $12.95 on Amazon. And the one that doesn't have the engraving goes for $10.99. So if you would like to support this um, broadcast, please um, purchase either the book or the key or the keychain. Now, getting back to the case. Now, there's another important development that happened today concerning this sworn affidavit that Norman um, submitted. Now, let me just refresh your memory. Um, William Valentin sued Norman Seabrook after this $5 million was invested in Platinum Partners, the $5 million from the COBA um, Reserve Fund. He accused Norman of violating the Constitution and bylaws of the union by moving the five million dollars without getting the consent of the executive board. We just dealt with that, and Elias contradicted um, Norman's statement on that. But William Valentin also accused Norman of receiving free trips, and the reason why he accused him of um, making these Platinum Partners investments. As, as payment are in return for him getting free things, um, free trips. Um, Norman's answer to that on this affidavit, he says that he did not receive any free trips. He says that the trips he went on, he paid for himself, except for one trip, I think, that he went to Israel um, with a contingent of New York officials in 2010 and he says that that trip was paid for by the COBA and he thought it was good um, public relations, goodwill for um, the correction to be represented in that trip to Israel. Um, but the other trips to Israel or to, Domin to the Dominican Republic, he's, he's saying that he paid for. Well, and that's in this sworn affidavit. Well, today the prosecution presented um, documents from a travel agency that booked the trips to the Dominican Republic and to Israel. And the travel agency um, was paid by Jonah Resnick, not by Norman Seabrook. And they even had Jonah Resnick's bank account and they showed um, how he paid for the trip. And they also showed the names of the people that were um, going on these trips and Norman's name is there. And so they have the, um, the information from the travel agent who, 
book the trips and they have the names of the people that are going on the trips and then they have Jonah Resnick paying for the accommodations, the plane fare and things like that for the trip. So as it stands right now, it looks as though um, the prosecution has shown evidence that that portion of the affidavit with Norman is swearing that he paid for these trips is um, not true. Now, tomorrow, I don't know whether or not his defense side is going to bring documentation of him paying for the trip or him re reimbursing Jonah Resnick for the trip. But as it stands right now, um, it looks as though Jonah Resnick pay paid for the trip on the private jet to the Dominican Republic and pay for another trip to Israel. So that's the way it stands right now. Tomorrow may be a different story and I will get back to you tomorrow. Jonah Resnick is supposed to take the stand tomorrow. It's probably going to be an all day thing with his testimony. And I will get back to you tomorrow. If not tomorrow, the next day, um, if I have anything to talk about concerning the case. So that's what that's what happened today. And I will get back to you tomorrow. And so until then. Peace and stay safe.